Who's your emergency contact? Who should we notify in the case of death? Welcome to the USP where I've spent the last two plus decades of my life. You know, I'm out of the shoe. I'm getting to the groove of things. Like about three weeks later after I got out of the shoe, my celly came out, uh, E. You know, the native that got jumped on, you know, uh, when he first came off the bus because they tried to put a bad rap on him. But he wasn't my celly this time when he came out. When he came out, he, they put him upstairs with somebody, you know. But <clears throat> at this time, you know, as soon as I come out the shoe, I called my wife. And like I said, when I went to the shoe, when they found the knife in the cell, I was supposed to get a visit that week. So my wife plans on, you know, as soon as I get out, I call her, let her know, hey, I'm back out in the yard. I didn't get any ride up or anything. My cellie took the shot. So a couple weeks, she's gonna come back down to visit me. You know, I've been locked down in the, in the shoe and then in the smooth. And then when I got to Florence, back in the shoe. So for the last two plus years, I've been locked down. You know, I've been out like three weeks in the last, like, you know, two plus years. So, <clears throat> but um, this guy T.Y. that I just shared a story about uh, the other uh, yesterday when he was chasing Ty White around on the on the block. He's been in Pollock with a couple of my homeboys and he's been at water. He just came from at water where he's with uh, a couple of my homeboys that was over there. And one of the homies that he was, he was with over there was named Shine. Shine's out of Denver. He's uh, half Puerto Rican and half Hawaiian. He's from a Denver gang out there in the state, in the state joint. I guess they're pretty big. So when he came to the feds, you know, he was kind of like, we had a few incidents and stuff or whatever. And he was kind of like, man, you know, I had the yard for the homies out there in the state joint. So I'm accustomed to dealing with whatever, you know, being privy to the information and this and that. So when he came to the feds, he was like, man, I'm over here. I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm nobody, you know? And, you know, I was telling it's not about you being nobody or anybody like that. It's just, we already have a structure here and we know we, you know, when we have when we have an incident, we have certain people that we delegate certain things to or go for advice. There's no need for fifty motherfuckers to sit in a circle and powwow, you know. But <clears throat> but when he came over to the feds, there was his there were some of his homies that were from Denver. Um, one of the one of the bros was named Myers. Uh, he did my tattoo on my uh he did my wife's name on my on the back of my arm he's he's like that with that uh with that gun but uh they're all from uh you know different from a denver gang but Meyer is mexican so when Meyer came he ran denver but he was independent from the sereños and uh and the faisas like the sereños was, would always want to get them dudes to get on count with them i mean they were on count when it comes to like racial war and stuff like that, but they were trying to get them out there on Mondays and Fridays to work out and, you know, participate in, in whatever they were doing, being on, on actual count with them. But so when uh, Shine came, you know, these are his homeboys, but he decided to run Islander for whatever reason, you know, that's what he decided to do. And his homeboys didn't have a problem with it. And we didn't have a problem with it because this is where you come in, you just coming into the feds. We don't really got anything to do with what you got going on in the state. You know, when you come to the feds, it's where do you declare yourself? And wherever you declare, that's your bed. You gotta make, you gotta, you gotta stick with it. Cause now once you leave a yard and you flip to be something else, the people that you used to run with might have some issues with that. So, but anyway, to the homie Shine, he ended up being a good homie, you know what I mean? And uh, when I was leaving to the smooth, when I was in the smooth, when they brought Easy over, the homie that beat up the, the police in Atwater, 
he had told me before he left that shine came to his window because in that water you're in um they have an overflow unit is 1a so if you get put in that unit you can like i mean they spray your windows so you can't see but you can scrape it or whatever and when people are going to chow or coming out on yard they can come and holler at you if they know what window you on or they can you, know, you guys can do the little gang sign sign language or whatever so easy was telling me that when uh before he left shine came to the window and that he went out that he said that he had went out to the outside hospital and they said he had a brain tumor and only like a few months to live. So when I got to Florence, me and T.Y. started chopping it up and he's like, yeah, I just came from Atwater and he started naming the homies that he was in Atwater with. And he's like, shit, you know, I got real cool with, uh, with Shine. I said, what Shine? I said, Puerto Rican, Hawaiian Shine out here from Denver. He goes, yeah, I be emailing him right here. I said, oh yeah. I said, shit, let me get on there. Boom. So I get on there and I email him through uh, through T uh, Y's email, and he respond back. I said, hey man, what's up, man? So we got to talking. And I was like, hey, my wife's coming down here in a couple weeks to visit me. Now my wife's family lives in Denver, so she can kill two birds with one stone. When she comes out to visit me. She can go and stay with her sister, hang out with her family, you know, and shoot out here on the weekend. Cause our visiting days, when I first entered the feds, there was six days a week visiting. Then it went to five days. Then it went to just Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then it went to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And now it's just Saturday and Sunday. You know, they tell you, oh, we want you to have strong family ties but they've taken four, four days of the, you know, four days out of, out of the week that used to be able to visit away from you. So they're forcing your family to work around their schedule instead of just being able to come when they have time. So anyways, I get to talk in the shine, shine and I tell them, hey, my wife's coming down in a couple weeks. When she come down, can I have her call you and, uh, just have a conversation with her. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So a week leading up to my wife coming to visit, I hit shine up, but we don't get no response. You know, we don't hear nothing back from the email. And you know, sometimes when people get out there, life gets busy and you know, they they go where they go and some, they come back or Sometimes dudes are just faking in in our, in our flakes. But at this time, T.Y. Is, is emailing Shine's wife when we didn't hear from him because my wife done came to visit me and left. And, you know, we still ain't heard from Shine. So T.Y. emails his wife and she's like, man, um, we haven't heard from him. We haven't heard from him. So, sorry, my little American bully is acting up. But um, back to the story. So I'm talking to T.Y. It's like, man, uh, the last message. What, what did you? What? You, what was it? I mean, like, how? Why did he just vanish, disappear, or ghost us? The terminology for out here, right? So he's like, well, the last time um, T.Y. talked to him, Shine had told him like, hey, uh. Yeah, I got you. Just, you know, let me know what's up. But I'm going to go holler at these dudes about something. These motherfuckers think I'm playing. So, Shine's done a lot of time. He's done time in the state. I think he did almost 15, 20 years in the state. And then came to the feds for another handful. You know, uh, she wants to play right now. But, um... But you know, a lot of us, after doing that time, some feel like there's some stripes from that. So when we come out to the street, we carry that arrogance about us. Like, you know, I've done some time, so I'm a big shot in this and that. But you have no idea what these kids out here been going through 
Why you been locked up? Yo, these kids out here that's running around in the streets, they've been earning their stripes. They've been going through trenches. So you coming out of prison thinking you're, you're somebody's big homie just because you did time. I mean, who the fuck know what you went to prison for? You know, like I said, going to prison isn't a badge, isn't a stripe, you know? It's nothing that to be proud of. Prison is a place where they put society's failure. So, so when people come out and they puff their chest out, you know, because they're all tied up or they've been out, out there hitting that iron and they're all yoked up, try to push their weight around, well, out here, it ain't just hands or homemade knives. They got a lot of tools out here to deal with, to uh, to equalize the, uh, you know, the difference between the size and the experience and whatever the skills. So the last conversation that Ty had with um, Shine was like, "Hey, I'm gonna go hard. These dudes, these dudes got me fucked up." That was it. That was the conversation. We never heard back email or anything from or anything. So let's fast forward maybe five or six weeks later. Um, you know, I get up every morning and I work out. You know, like I said, in in Florence, if you're not if your program ain't in the block, you might never get to it because they don't ever call the moves on time or nothing. So I'm up 5.30, I'm up 6 o'clock, I'm under the stairs doing pull-ups on top of the stairs doing dips, pull-up dips and push-ups. You know, I try to get it in as much as I can, but I stay healthy really by playing a handball and basketball. But there's not much of that going on in Florence, you know. Like I said, the moves are all fucked up, you never get out to where you want to go. So I get up, I put on my radio. And I'm doing my routine, but I'm always watching the news. I'm watching CNN, Fox, whatever they got on TV, because I don't really have a TV. I'm just a guest in Florence. The Native Americans have a TV, but I'm not really big on trying to control the TV or anything like that, because you know I do my own time. But there's always two or three channels that's got the news on every morning for a couple hours until about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock and then people move on and watch it, whatever program. So we're watching the news and I see uh, the news say a jogger was jogging on the side of the road, past a white sedan and kind of smelled something foul. I don't think nothing of it. You know what I mean? It's, it's the news. So of course, it's the Denver news is out there in Denver. So all day they're, you know, they're showing the news that the police came, they pop open the trunk, found a body, whatever, you know, they, they consider the situation foul and they're looking for a suspect. You know, they put the hotline up. If anybody got any information called, but they haven't ID'd the body. So that's just the news and I move on with my life. I go out my daily business or whatever. And about maybe three days later, T.Y. comes up to me and goes, hey man, I just got a fucked up email from uh, Shine's wife. I was like, what? So he brings me over to the computer. We get on the email and it's like, the email is like, hey, I'm sorry, I haven't got back to you, but um, I think they found Shine. I was just down there to ID his uh his body. And we were reading that, we were like, and we was fucked up, because that's the homie. You know, I don't know the relationship him and Shine and T.Y. had, but obviously they were pretty cool because he's got his information, he's got Shine's wife's information. Like people like us, we don't really give out our wives' information, our family's information if if we're not friends with with somebody. We don't have a bond or trust or trust them, you know? So he had Shine's uh, wife. So, you know, they were cool enough 
to exchange information and they were communicating when they were on the street. So, you know, we're watching, we're reading the email and we're like, man. And then I snapped. I was like, dude, ask, is it that white sedan on the news a few days ago? It's like, yeah, I remember seeing that. So we asked, you know, we asked, you know, we sent the email and asked him like, what happened? How, you know, how did he meet his end? And she's just like, man, they found his body in the, in the back of a sedan a few days ago. He wasn't out a year, you know? I don't even think he was out six months. He did all that time. And, you know, from the time that we heard from him when I was in Florence, and from the time that Easy told me he had the brain tumor, he had, he had already outlived the diagnosis because the doctor only gave him a few months. So I don't know what else was going on with his health. But, you know, he'd done two decades. Came home. And end up in a trunk. Like, for me, I don't feel like doing time is a strike, is a badge of honor. I should get pat on the back with it. I do feel like I can have a sense of pride and a sense of accomplishment from being able to survive the time that I've done. But that doesn't set me apart from anybody else out here. That doesn't make me more gangster than the next person or anything like that. If anything, it just gave me a certain different experience that, that I can relate to or that I have knowledge of if anybody inquires. But anybody, you got to be respectful out of the streets. You know, when you're living that life, you have, to, you have to understand that the people that you're dealing with is living the same life that you are. So the things that you're willing to do, assume that they're willing to do that too. If you think you're hardcore, if you think you're a gangster, if you think you're a killer, well, assume that the people that you're dealing with in the street, it's the same too. Or have, those, or have that within them. Even they act like they're cowards. Cowards are the worst ones. Cowards kill you because they're scared. So, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's about understanding your environment, whether you're in prison or out here in the street or in the workforce. is understanding your environment and respecting it and conduct yourself accordingly or... Might end up in the trunk. Welcome to USP.